find into that before you actually try and watch the video or it'll get upset. Yep, you're quite right, Andrew, to boo Casey. I'm with you there. Just wasn't a big enough or a long enough boo. OK, we've started recording, so we're going to start today's lecture. But before we do, does anyone have any questions from last week? Suddenly get very quiet in here. I've got a question from last night. Um, <laughs> see the see the test thingy that you activated for the what's his face professional computing practice? Is that just so we can test the files before submitting? I know it's off topic, but just it is off topic, but that is true. Yes, I thought I'd put that in. It was just a it's just to play around because people haven't used that particular peer assessment thing before. So it's just to play around with. OK, OK, that's all. That's all. Sorry about this. This is for another module for those of you that are wondering. Anything on the, you know, the module that we're actually doing today? See, when it comes to the peer assessment stuff. No, on the module we're doing today. We're not no, doing peer assessment. As in the, the, the paired assessment for this one, Tony. Oh, paired, sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean paired. I meant paired. Do you pick who we get or can we pick? Uh, the module coordinator has done different things in different years, so I'll wait till he decides. Cool, cool. Uh, in all seriousness, the lab was due in 10 minutes ago. Only 37 out of 71 of you have handed it in. Guys, you need to hand in the stuff. You need to keep up. All right, so I've mentioned this before, so I'm going to have another special meeting with those that didn't hand it in because I need reasons why you're not doing it. Um, the more you fall behind, the harder it comes to catch up. So uh, I'll send out an invitation to that later. Um, or we might just come around you and pick you off one by one in the lab. We'll see how we get on. So if you get a virtual knock on the door from one of us, you'll know why it is. Um, Roland, yes, I actually have the slides for once, so I will put the slides and the lab onto Teams as soon as we're finished here. Um, so I'll get them up as, as soon as I possibly can. Abayomi, I understand you're trying to catch up. That's great. I know you started late, so let me know if you have issues. Andrew, yep, I did see your excuse that the dog ate your homework. Um, frankly, nobody's buying it. But, you know, I'll let you off this once. Anyone else want to put in an excuse before we move on? Uh, teams didn't like my homework, so it just didn't upload it. Genuinely? No, 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 it's uploaded, don't worry. Oh, it's too early in the morning for me. So could we then start it like an hour later then, if it's too early? Say that again, sorry? Could we then start it like an hour later then, because it's too early then? Well, do you know, one of the things that they did when they did all this stuff was completely ignored the fact that they're working online. We could do everything in the afternoon, but no, I've got lectures that start at nine in the morning for no good reason. The students and me don't have anything else for the rest of the day. We could start at two o'clock. Yeah, it's not like at what, four o'clock as well. You know, it doesn't really matter because we're all at home anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, I might. I, Weirdly, not four o'clock, Nicholas, because what I'm trying to do is I'm still trying to pretend that things are normal. So like, oh. I'm sure and tie like I would do if I was at the campus and come five o'clock, I take off my shirt and tie and I just try and feel as if I'm not at work. Someone pointed Roger, out okay. I'm not working from home or living at work. And I think that's 
that's one of the issues that we have. Uh, a couple of people have pointed out that the PowerPoints are on Aula, so you can grab them there. I think the ones on Aula do have a, a voiceover. So again, if you did, weren't aware of that, Jerry does a voiceover. So if you want to make up for my poor lectures, go and listen to Jerry's and get a proper one because he's he's spoken over the slides and I'll give you an idea. Even if you're OK with mine, go and listen to his as well because having a different um, perspective can actually really help. They're really, uh, really good. Sorry? Uh, they're really good, uh, the ones on all the... Good. I think I only listened to the very first one just to see how it was working. Now, and I deliberately didn't listen to it again simply so that I wasn't... Um, so I didn't repeat what he did. But I'm glad they're good, so yes. Go and have a listen. Um, Roland, yes, I have a pile of tabs open because that's all the things I use. Because if I have to switch between things, you don't want to wait for me scrabbling around and going and finding the file and opening it up and bringing it in and starting it up. It just means I can do things like that. Or if we have a wee break, I can do things like this. Wow. Just to Wait, so you have your tabs open on the top and on the side. Yeah, I don't like them on the the top. So there's a an extension called Tree Style Tab that I've always used. I've used it for years because, frankly, I've got a widescreen monitor, and I actually like having the tabs on the side so I can see them and I can read what they are as well. Um, ah, that's clever. But the new version of Firefox, it used to be you could put the tabs on the side, and that was an option. But now it's something called a sidebar, so it works on the sidebar or something. I can't remember. I looked it up at the time and I've forgotten already. Gotcha. Uh, but I can't seem to turn them off at the top. But I do like them on the side. It makes it easier to see where things are rather than sort of scrolling across and, and trying to understand, you know, how when they go tiny and you can't actually see what the things are. Yeah. At least this way I, I can read the whole thing and see where I'm supposed to be. OK, so now that you've all complained enough about my browser tab habits, you just mute while the lectures are on and listen to them later. So you don't listen to me, Jen. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I'm just, I, I'm crushed. Absolutely crushed. Yeah, at least just being honest. Thomas, I'm having a wee look at your graphic there. What is it you're trying to actually access? And Nicholas, you may have been honest, but that's no reason to to crush someone's dreams. I kind of assume that you, you guys are actually listening to these things. Well, I, I get... listen to you. I would not let you go on and I'm mute. The to it later. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Well covered. Well, you know the saying about eggs and omelets. I, I said I didn't mute, mute you. I mute the PowerPoint. Yeah, it makes sense. I, I gave up. Do you mean Moodle like... or do you mean Aula? Oh, it's sorted, OK. Uh, do me a favour, send Thomas, send a, an email to the help desk with that thing and tell them that you had ac you had problems accessing it, because frankly, they don't believe me. And the more students that send them things, uh, letting them know the issues, the, the happier I will be, because I'm not impressed with the performance of these things. That goes with everybody. If you have oh, issues. Oh, come on, you just read that wrong. You clearly not had enough coffee this morning. Where's your delivery? Oh, oh it's tea, isn't it? You don't do coffee. Tea. No, no one should drink coffee. Coffee. Imagine up. not drinking coffee in the morning. What the hell? Imagine drinking coffee in the morning. I've said it before. Bro, I'll say it again. Coffee's the work of the level. devil. 
I mean, I'd gladly, I, I'd gladly be with the devil if it means drinking coffee. You're just weird. Chris is right. Coffee is garbage. Thomas doesn't drink at all. Thomas, I'm almost certain you have to drink something. I mean, I, I'm no biologist, but probably. Imagine drinking either of them. or oh, Alistair. What do you do? Just drink water or something? Yes, Declan, coffee is. Coffee is exactly that. It even looks like it. Yes, but yeah, you're just enabling them, sir. That's not like that's not their true point of view. My daughter watches a great British Bake Off, and it was a final last night. And there was a woman in it whose name escapes me. Laura was it? And I've never liked her, but last night she said, "I hate coffee. I hate the smell of it. I hate using it in anything." I'm with her. Oh, Thomas, no, not the. <laughs> 16,000 spoonfuls of sugar drinks. Oh, boy. My okay, goodness. that's even worse. Oh. Like substituting either tea or coffee with energy drinks, that's like the worst of all options, man. Oh, it is. It absolutely is. You must absolutely crash come the afternoon. And he puts rum in it as well. Oh, Thomas. Now, well, that's a wee bit better. As long as it's black rum, though. Kunsel juice. Nothing better than Kunsel juice. Declan, there are so many people not from Scotland who are now wondering what we're talking about. But Kunsel juice is great. Two Red Bulls. Oh, man. See, when I see students wandering about with Red Bulls, I just know that they'll not be listening to them. <sighs> I suppose at some point we better start the lecture. I mean, I'm in no rush. I mean, I guess so, right? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, kind of why we're here, but... Yeah, I guess. Seems I guess I would think the be discussion honest. of tea and coffee and, uh, and, I guess, energy drinks too is more important, I guess. Uh, I mean, that's something that's something that impacts all of us immediately. Absolutely. Espresso is oh man. Just drink pure black, bro. It's it's the best pure, it's the best and most un, unchanged form of coffee. Like, I don't even know what that means. Moving swiftly on. Oh, Casey's getting bored with all this talk of drinks. All right. Uh, let's talk about programming instead. Um, <laughs> when you need a quick hit with your 9 a.m. Greg sausage roll. Yeah. What could possibly go wrong with that? Greg sausage roll and Red Bull. <laughs> All right. Um, I want to talk about a few new things today. So there's, there's going to be stuff um, that we haven't covered and stuff that we've only covered a wee bit and sort of covered in passing. So there's quite a lot of new things in today. Um, so, Jen, I know you don't listen at all, but you know, try and listen in this time and. Um, We'll see if we can cover quite a few things because what I want to talk about is uh, stateful programming. I want to talk about how we store data from one run of a program to another. You know, all you people with your fancy new video games like Pac-Man would get really annoyed if you came back the next time. And <laughs> Pac-Man. And your high score had, what, you mean that's not a new video game? <laughs> that is older than me, man. Um, you'd get really annoyed if you came back and your high score had gone. So you need to store the high score. Roland, no, I haven't started the slide yet. Um, but OK, if you want the slides started. And do you know why I haven't started the slides? Do you know what's going to happen the second I start the slides? People will complain. Right. 
Are you happy down here? <laughs> he forced me to have that, so it's his fault. I mean, it only mutes after a second, so well, thing. Yeah, I prefer I'm the Flintstones. Where was? Oh yeah, so you want to remember things for next time around. So basically you want to store stuff. So we're going to talk about files. We're going to talk about how we save things to files and how we bring it back the next time. Because as you well know, when you're running a program, all the data is just a memory and you turn it off, it's gone. We want to store it somewhere. Later on in the course, we'll talk about using databases so we can have formatted data. But I want to start off just now with just files. OK, let's look at some code. If I can find it. Not only do I have lots of tabs on Firefox, I've got lots of tabs on my computer. All right. Suddenly it starts to make sense, eh? Unfortunately. Casey, you're just you're just wrong in so many levels. I mean, I thought we already knew that, but at least it's clarified. All right, so I need some data. So what am I doing? What is it if I set, oops. What is it if I put things in quotes? Jeez, oh. It's a string, isn't it? Yep. So I'm setting up some, goodness me. Genuinely cannot type this morning. Hey, it's okay. Definitely your lack of caffeine. Yeah, yeah. you need coffee. Yeah, lack of something. All right, so I've got some data there. And what I want to do is save it to a file. So I am going to set up a new file. And to do that, um, we're going to use a, a new keyword. Called open. And um, because I've switched to Visual Code, and because you're using um, PyCharm, it's showing you some of our open things here. So there, there are other types of open. We'll just stick to our basic open just now. It's a function, not surprisingly. So we'll put in our quotes. And as soon as we do that, we get help for do. There's a whole pile of stuff in there. So we're going to ignore it just now. So we're just going to play to begin with. Uh, and all I'm going to do is give it a name. And because I don't want to type too much, I'm going to give it a smaller name. So rather than calling it Flintstones, I'm just going to call it FS. And I need to do one more thing. I need to tell it how I'm going to open it. So it's the mode thing up here. And again, you're probably familiar with modes. You probably come across files that you can't change because they are read only. Or files that you can edit because they're read write. So that's what we're looking at here. We're deciding how we want to open this file. So I'm going to open it with W. So anyone want to take a a running guess at what W might mean? Word. Right. 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 We're right into it. OK, so we've set up a variable called Flintstones file. We've opened it. The name is fs.txt and we're opening it in write mode. So question, 
do I need to set up a file called fs.txt? Uh, yes. I mean, it doesn't exist yet, so I would guess so. Yes, it doesn't exist yet. But of course that happens all the time, so Python's got it covered. So, if it doesn't exist, Python will make it for you. So I don't have to go away and create it. So if it doesn't exist, Python will do it. So I'm going to put things into it. And remember we assigned it to that variable called Flintstones file, so I can start typing. And thankfully, my nice helpful editor has come up, so I don't have to type the whole thing. I can grab Flintstones file. And as we've been doing previous lectures, we've talked about things called methods. So Enrique spoke about them before. I can't remember. I think Pablo maybe did as well. And we talked about them in passing, but we're actually going to use them today. Yes, you can choose the folder the file is stored in, so you can set up a path to the file. So you can see it's just a, uh, a file name there. In quotes, so if you don't set a path, it's just going to open up in the same uh, folder as your program itself. But you can set up any sort of path you want. So anything that you can do in the file system, you can do here. So I could have said C colon backslash Flintstones backslash R backslash the backslash best backslash cartoon backslash sucks backslash two backslash u backslash casey backslash fs.txt and that would be absolutely fine. Why do we need to get me involved again every time? So we've got the file and we are going to do stuff to it. And because this is built into Python, it has certain things attached to it and for an object oriented programming language, which this can be. These are called methods and we access the methods by saying we have something and we're going to use something with it and we access that by pressing the full stop. So I've hit the full stop and you've immediately got a whole pile of suggestions there things that will work with that file. And there are things that you probably aren't surprised about. You can write to it, you can close it, you can name it, you can read it, read line, write line, all sorts of stuff. So I am going to take the first option and I am going to write to it. It's a function, so I'll need my brackets. And look what it's got in there. It's saying S S T R. So what does that mean? It's going to take an input as a string. It wants a string. Well, fortunately, I set up a string already, so I'm going to put in Flintstone one. And that's it. We've written to a file. There's one more thing we need to do with the file before we leave it. When you open a file on any computer, computer in its widest sense, so we're talking PCs, Macs, phones, whatever it happens to be. When you open them, which we did up here, does anyone know what else we have to do? Close the, close the file. We have to close it. So hopefully there's going to be a method, so I'll hit dot and there is and there's a close method to close that file. If you don't do that, it leaves the file open. It means other things can't access it. It means it takes up system memory and it means you'll be in a whole world of hurt. So make sure you close your file. Um, I have used these like um uh, what you call them after the dot, like the um, methods. Methods. I've used some methods before, like for example, capitalize or something. Uh, like yep. uh, they were before, um, like they were shown in previous slides and presentations. Um, mm -hmm. 
but like in, in some you just leave like you, you leave empty brackets um or otherwise they won't work but like why um, why do they need those brackets if they're just empty because all of these things are functions so even if a function doesn't have any parameters that you want to pass to it to signal that it me you mean the function you still have to put in the brackets so even if it's just right. open close they still have to be there so you need to add those after yours yeah gotcha. otherwise it'll get upset it's one of those it ain't why it just is it's how the language is written so it's just something you have to do you might as well Copy say that. why is it a colon instead of a semicolon for a, uh, a for loop there's no particular reason it could have been a semicolon but it's a colon and if we're calling functions we need to put in brackets so i can't give you a I can't give you a here's why it's better because some languages don't have that. But it's how Python's chosen to do it. Gotcha. OK, so we have a file, so let's run it and see what happens. Well, that was quite. Dull. Although sometimes dull is good. So what do you think's happened? It's created a file. Well, let's find out. We're in the I mean, you now. haven't added the you haven't added the brackets after the close function, so it should still be open. This is true. Not only that, it didn't complain. Well, there we go. Just at the end of the list there, fs dot text. It was made at ten thirty six on the twenty fifth of November, so we know it's new. Interesting that it didn't come up with the close, because we should have had the break, even though. And you can see there it says it doesn't need anything. It said none. This is the power and the drawback of an IDE like this. What's happened here is that in this case, Visual Studio Code has said, right, OK, you've asked for the close function. The close function is a function, needs brackets, but it doesn't actually need anything with it. So it's basically in the background said, yeah, OK, I'll just let you do it and I'll add them in for you. So it's worked and it's done that for you and you need to be careful of things like that. So if you run it in another compiler, I, as I said, I don't have PyCharm installed. I don't know if it gives you an error. I see Thomas has put up an image, so I don't know if that's what that's showing. Let stones fail. I'd need to see the rest of the code, Thomas. I suspect what's happened is you haven't. Uh, no. Oh, I see what you've done. You haven't closed your quotes. Yeah, so by the time I came back, Nick's got there already. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and someone's saying about I wrote the file, but you need to open it to see it. So let's just do that. Type fs.txt and there's Fred. Good. It's working. So let's extend it. Let's 
but again, can add in some more data. And see what we've got. So what's happened here? Is this what you were expecting? No. Nobody's sure if it's what they were expecting or not. Does you need to use uh, A to append? Oh, sorry. I was actually really just talking about the, the fact they're all scrunched up together. Uh, would you need to put a backslash with a tab or an N? Yeah. Right, so it's done exactly what we have asked it to do. As Jen points out, we haven't asked for a tab or a space or a new line. We've just said put this text into the file. Well, you see, I actually, sorry, um, I was uh, I was a bit confused whether my thing actually created a new file and wrote to it, but I, I searched for it. I found it in my, um, in my in the same directory that my Python file is in, but it just wrote down Fred, like Wilma, Bernie, and Betty are not in there. Well, originally I just had Fred because I had only written Flintstone 1. I hadn't written Flintstone 2 yet. So now I've got Flintstone 1 and Flintstone 2, so I've got Fred Wilmer. OK, so in that case, it just writes them without any spaces. Like it uh, it just uh, it just writes them one after the other, right? It's like a plus. It's like a plus function in that case. Yep. You can oh, show that yeah. again if I do. Add in rubble one and run it. So, as we were saying, we haven't added, or as Jen was saying, we haven't added in any formatting. We've just said write the text. So, it's done exactly what we've asked it to it's written the text. Does it also overwrite what you've already put in there? Absolutely. That was the next thing I was going to say. When we have opened it in W mode, not only will it create the file if we don't have it, it will also overwrite an existing file. So there's only one fs.txt. If I do a dir on it, if you see it's... Oops, Should do that in the right place. You can see it's now 10.42. So every time we run this, it's overwritten it. So it will create a new file, but it will also overwrite it. So that's something else we need to sort out because there's sometimes we might want to put in some formatting. Or sometimes we might want to add to the file rather than just overwriting it. Tony, so there's a, a few question? issues that we have here. Tony. Yeah. Can I ask a question? See, oh, see, when, see when I go into terminal and write type fx.txt, it comes up with the system cannot find the file specified. Okay. On PyCharm. On PyCharm. You're in the wrong directory. So see how I'm in C users Tony G? Yeah. The first thing I did was do a DIR, which gives me a list of files, and you probably saw a whole pile of things come up. So I can just say uh, DIR fs.txt, which is what I did before, and it shows it. If you do the same thing, it won't be there because your file is stored somewhere else. So you need to go to where that file is stored and access it there. Right. OK. 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 Cheers. Uh, so. We've got some things, we're putting them together. Let's add in some more stuff. So let's add in, for example, the number of them. So we have four of them. Oh, but of course, it said the right method is for a string. And I've given it a number. 
So if I want to see how many Flintstones there are, I have to put it in a string. So now it works. But it's just a string again. So we've got a few issues. It needs to be strings. We don't have any formatting unless we add it in. It overwrites rather than appends. And we can't store numbers, which is a bit of a pain. Okay, we'll, we'll park those just now, because at least we do have a way of saving things to a file. Um, so presumably, we also have a way of opening a file. Makes sense. So I'm going to use the same uh, variable. So I'm going to say Flintstones file becomes. I'm going to open it again. I'll give it the same file name. But here I'm going to do a different mode. So instead of opening it in write mode, anyone want to take a shot at what I'm going to open it in? Okay. Well, has got it in chat. Maybe We're going to open R. it in read mode. So what this does is it goes to the system. It asks, do you have a file called fs.txt? If it does, it opens it in read mode and assigns it to the variable Flintstones file. Sorry, it assigns the file to that variable. So then we want to get the information. So the cast becomes the Flintstones file. And we are going to, let's see, buffer it, close it, detach it, mode it. Oh, read. Read looks good. Let's read it. Still a function. Visual Studio will cover up for me if I get it wrong, but I'm not going to do that because I want to use proper Python. So I'll put in the quotes, uh, the brackets. And you can see there when I do that, it says that none is entirely reasonable. It's also got a size, so you can open up parts of files. We'll talk about that another time. But I don't need anything just now. And just like anything else, I can use print. So in this case, I am going to run print. So I don't have to go back to my terminal to do it. I can do it all in my program. Someone's asking, is there a certain format the data in the file needs to be in for you to be able to store individual pieces of it in different variables? We will come to that. Andrew, you've got your hand up. I don't know if that's a hangover from before. Yeah, sorry. OK, so we'll try this. Oh, so now we've written the data, read it back in, and displayed it with the print. There are other... Are we not going to close it again after, or...? Because? Um, I mean, we, we we opened the file again with the, and I'm not sure whether it's, there's a difference between read and write, but um, I would I would assume you wouldn't need to close it again. No difference, you're entirely right. You do have to close it again. Because that leaves it open, it means that other things can't access it, and it means it uses up the system resources. Thomas, are you okay now? So we open it with 
W mode for write and R mode with read. I did notice when I was doing these methods that there was write, but there was also Somewhere, so let it go. Like right lines. Yeah. Actually, no. I'm just going to stick with right just now. I'm not going to go into that just now. Okay, so we've got a way of having a text file. We've got a way of saving things into it. We've got a way of bringing them back in. But we have an issue about formatting. We have an issue about um, file types. And we have it, data types because it's all just strings in the file. And those might be issues. It's created files for us. So another issue is the overwrite. Um, so even though we use the same file name, it's overwriting what we have. And I can prove that to you by changing the variable name. And you'll see that there's a two popped up in there. So it's not using the same file, it's overwriting. We haven't got any way yet to add things to a file. So these are some things that we might want to address later on. That said, there's no reason we can't um, access those files. Those are just files like any other that we can access uh, in the way we would normally access files. He says again, speaking really slowly because I have lost it on my system. So much for keeping tabs open. So it says down there, C colon backslash users Tony G. C users Tony G. And there is our FS file, which I can just double click and we can open it in Notepad. So it's a normal file. It's not anything different. It's exactly the same kind of file it would make with anything else. Not surprisingly. So that's good. We have files. We can create them. We have some issues with them that we might want to correct. Um, so let's think about ways that we can create a file. And as Mohammed asked, we can save it in different variables and with different variable types. I did say to you that we were going to cover some more things and some other stuff that we had kind of jumped over before. So I am going to create a new file. First thing I'm going to do actually is save it as a Python file so that it gives me my Python types. I'm going to call it pickle. Because the first thing I want to do is this import thing, which we vaguely talked about before. We'd said before that there's a whole bunch of 
functionality built into Python. So all the stuff that we just did on opening files, saving data to files, closing them, all that, that's all built in. We didn't have to do anything. But there's also a whole load of other uh, functionality that we can load in. We spoke about it briefly before when we talked about uh, putting in random numbers, when we were bringing in uh, mathematical functions, we imported a whole set of functions. And the functionality that we want to bring in is called pickle. Isn't that the file you literally just created? Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to demonstrate using pickle. Gotcha. As long so as no Rick with, is involved. You know, with, with great originality, when I was demonstrating files, I called it files. And now that I'm demonstrating pickle, I'm calling it pickle. I mean, I, I don't know where I find these names. The, the, the creativity is just sparking out of me. Mm, I can feel it. All right, so let's think about other ways that we can save things. Let's think about different data types. So we could have a string. We could have a number. And we could have a list. Now we did look briefly at lists um, maybe five weeks ago when we talked about the different variable types that we had in Python. So if you don't remember, a list is a, a way of... Brackets. That's right. It's a way of storing all types of data um, and we designate it using square brackets. And then we can put all sorts of things in there. I think actually we had to use lists for last week's assignment. Um, and there was pretty much, I think, no other way around it. And there was other ways of doing that. I genuinely can't remember last week's assignment. <laughs> there was other ways of doing it. You could do it via print lines, you could do it via lists. Just depends what way you wanted to do it. Yeah, but print lines would take... Okay, Casey. <laughs> There's always other ways of doing things. In that case, he's right. The, jo the joys of programming. So, we can set up a a string, a number, a list, and in the list can go all sorts of things. Uh, so we could say five Pythons. So I'll make that actually, uh, let's not make it five because I don't want two fives. Let's make it Oh, I know what we'll make it. We'll make it one of your tasks is to find out why I'm making it 1969. Could you make it 1967? Why 67? Reasons, never mind, as a joke. Well, it was 1969 no, when Monty Python started. It was. And it's, it's also the main landing. That's very nice. It's also the main landing. I, of course, wasn't born. I wasn't born until 1989. Um, so I don't remember it. It smells fishy to me. Are you suggesting I'm not telling the entire truth? <laughs> I'm implying that you sound more... Mm. 
Well, you've had a hard life. If I can't if wait to hear hard you life this. If you're only 31. Well, I have had a hard life, Jen. I worked with you for 10 years for a start. It was actually more. <laughs> <laughs> just, just 10 I years. 10 five. wonderful years, Tony. All right, so we've got a string, a number, and a list. And we're going to use pickle files instead of text files. But it's the same kind of idea. All right, so I'm going to set up a file. And we will call it a pickle file. Becomes open. We're going to open the pickle file as before. We are going to give it a name. So I'm going to call it PF dot PCK. PF is pickle file, not surprisingly, and uh, PCK is just what tends to be used for uh, to identify pickle files. Just like with the text file though, we also need to decide how we are going to open it. We need a mode. And you can see that there are modes there. So what I'm going to do is very quickly, Go and ask Google. Come on. Are you guys still there? Because my screen keeps. Yeah, yeah, still here. Still here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm still here. Clearly doing Actually, something. I regret to inform you that I'm no longer here. <laughs> Goodness sake. It did this yesterday, and I think it was Patch Tuesday. And I wonder if today is installed Wednesday. I wonder if it's installing that update in the background. Today is time to halt. Today is I'm out of RAM Wednesday. Today is what, sorry? I'm out of RAM memory Wednesday. Yeah, probably. It's all those tabs that I've got open. Should have drank coffee Wednesday. Genuinely not doing anything. I'm scared to click in anything now because I just know at some point it's going to catch up. So why not? Because like the audio is fine, but like your video feed is not updating at all. So why not mm -hmm. have a five minute break so you can reboot your computer? All right. Let's try our Casey. Yeah, well, actually, I might just. Um, I might just take them that. Although, man, when this started, I started task managing. That's it finally catching up. So it's definitely doing something. What sort of hardware are you running on? It's a like Surface 2005 Pro. hardware? It's a Surface Pro. It's about three years old. That's good enough for running Flintstones on YouTube. <laughs> uh, it's clearly doing something in the background because it just it just suddenly stopped there. Normally it does this on a Friday. Oh yeah, ninety five percent memory. Superb.
now even task managers not responding. Now seems to be a, a good time for Casey to explain his excellent joke. Oh, it was not. It was, at least two people understood it. It was yeah. well. It make it so the rest of us do. It was because Celtic won the, the Champions League dash European Cup in 1967. I was like, why don't you change it to that? But, but at least two people got it. So it wasn't a joke. Okay. Okay, it wasn't a joke. It was more. It was a reference. It was a reference point to 1967. I was googling 1967. There it was like Canada. Celebrating its 100th anniversary or something. Oh, Chris, do not start that argument with me. All right. I think, much as it pains me to say so, Casey's what I right. think I'm going to do is take Casey's advice. I'm <laughs> going to, oh, there's what's taken the memory. Look at that. 1.6 gig for teams. Oh, you can't see it because it's not on your screen. It's teams that's taken all the memory. Look at that. Well, I mean, you're sharing your screen while also like sharing video. I guess that's that takes a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Wait, uh, how, much, do... how much base system memory have you got in that machine? Uh, eight, I think. You might need to up it to 16. Oh, yeah, like 16 is pretty yeah. much bare minimum these days. Have you ever seen a Surface Pro? Uh, yes, I have seen a Surface Pro and they're not upgrade -able. So thanks for the hint. Get yourself then. a new machine. Yeah, buy a new machine. I didn't even buy this one. I'm not going to buy another one. Right, okay, I'm <laughs> going to take Casey's advice. I'm going to um, see if I can... Uh... Oh, man. Maybe it's the recording that's taking so much memory. I doubt it. The recording shouldn't be happening try. locally, though. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a five minute break. I'm going to see if I can get this to speed up a wee bit so you guys can take a wee break and we'll come back in five minutes. Gotcha. You guys can have a comfort break and I'll have a fix my computer break. I'll make myself a coffee. You're a weirdo. No, you. I'll join you, Nicholas. There we go. I have this one sensible person here. I think Mohammed's right. I think I might be restarting teams. So if you lose the screen, you'll know what's happened. I just typed in a text message to say I'll see you at quarter past. It wouldn't even do that. This is terrible. See, all the executives at West College Scotland, they had uh, uh, this Surface Pro. And when I, like, they were constantly breaking down. And I asked the principal to like get something else, you know, for the office. She said, but this one fits in my purse. And that's where the arguments end. It's just, it fits in the purse and she can carry it around. That's it. Oh, well, do the important things. All right, okay. I'm going to try leaving this team and we'll see what happens. I'll see you shortly.
Så er det kvæster, og jeg ved, at den står at der og giver mig. Okay. Video seems to actually be working on my side now. I take it you can hear me. Is it a case yes. of I've, is it a case of I've told you so? No, I didn't reboot. I've just oh man, I restarted Teams. It went down to four hundred meg, and now actually it's back up more than it started at. It's now at one point eight gig of memory. Just from starting up again. <sighs> right, we'll see how we get on.
OK, we had been. Setting up files, so we were talking about pickle files. Oops. So we had set up a string, we'd set up a number and we'd set up a list with a number and a string. And we were now going to open up a pickle file in the same way as we opened up a text file. But we're going to open it slightly different. We still want to open it in write mode. But we've got one extra thing because we want to store actual data types in this. Pickle file. We don't want to open it as a text file. We want to open it as a binary file. So that allows us to store all the different types. OK, so we're opening it with. W B. OK, everyone Is that right binary. Pardon? Is that right binary? Yes. Aren't I clever? So. We're now going to use some of our pickle functions, so I'm going to have pickle. And one of the methods that we have in it, and you'll see it's come up straight at the top because Visual Studio Code has styled things that are the most common. And the one at the top is dump, so we don't write to a pickle file, we dump stuff into it. It's a function, same as before, so we need a brackets and then we save what we want to put in. So I'm going to put in the string. Anything else I'm going to need there? You'll need to close the file. Uh, we'll get to that, not yet. Anything else when we dump to it? number do you on your computer have only one file or do you when you're using things have to tell it which file you're talking about which file you're talking about so you need to direct it to the pickle file we need to direct it to our pickle file so we need to tell it which file it's going into so we're dumping the string into the file called pickle file. So we could have lots of files. We could have files for everybody that uses the system, or we could have a high score file and a login file, or we could have files for all sorts of things. So we need to say what it is we're going to do, and we can dump anything into that. So we're going to pickle dump. Uh, let's have the number. Put that into the file. And we could pickle dump list. It doesn't matter. We can chuck anything in there. And helpfully, it will remember what it is. So saving it as a binary file means that we can still save our text files, but we can also save numbers and we can save lists and they will come back in. In the same way. I've been putting in variables. It doesn't have to be a variable. Actually put the data in. So I'm just going to put in. To a pickle file. Because that's a string, it'll be saved as a string. So we can put all sorts of things in there. I think it was Nicholas. We'll now do what you wanted me to do, which was. Close it, but I think Casey, um, Casey wanted that. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't going to steal your thunder, but thanks. So we've now got a pickle file. If 
fire on that. It's upset. So what have I got wrong? There's no brackets after the close. Oh wait, no, it does that for you. Never mind. I put them in anyway because I like them there. Hey, where are we? Pickle dump. A string into the pickle file. Module pickle has no attribute dump. It's actually not happy about import pickle. Oh, maybe because you haven't explained the file type. Well, maybe because you are inside of pickle at the moment. Well, not inside of pickle. We're just it's a module which we can import. Tony, see when you select the problems next to the uh, to the left the terminal, mine's just coming up saying Pickle has no dump member. If you know what that means. Yeah, it means that the method doesn't exist, and I'm not entirely sure why it's upset at that. Pablo, Enrique, any thoughts? Works on PyCharm, created the file. So it's a it's a Visual Studio Code thing. I cannot see anything wrong with that at all. Uh, the woes of using inferior software. So it ran OK when I did it in debug mode. Well, we are, we are definitely in a, in a real pickle here. You just had to go there, didn't you? <laughs> I, right, I'll need to think about that one because it's run OK in debug mode. And I don't know why. Cannot think. But it must be something to do with um, Visual Studio Code, because I checked the code itself in that online one that I usually use. Yeah, Enrique is talking about imports, but again, I'm not sure why that um, then ran in debug mode. All right, it's running anyway. I'll think about that. We'll come back to it. In the meantime, what I wanted to point out is that we have pickle.py that was made at 11.23. So it's just been made. So I can then view pickle. Oh, wait a minute. It hasn't made the file because it wasn't pickle.py. It's pf.pck that we want. I've got it somewhat working, but it's actually giving it in sort of garbled data. 
That's what you'd expect. No, because I've done, I've done, show. I've done pickle underscore fail equals open PFK read and then rec equals pickle file dot read and then print rec and then cause pickle file and it comes up. It works. If that helps. That 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 fixed it for me. If you want to give that a try. Say that again slowly. If, if you want, I'll just copy and paste it in the chat and you can have it. Well, I'm just not entirely sure what the difference. I op I opened the file like that. And then I done that. There's there's the whole code. And then yeah, so you've done the same as me. You don't have the output lines, Tony, I think. I, no, I haven't got there yet. Yeah, true. Uh, there, and then there's the output. Uh, right, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that's entirely right. See, isn't programming fun? I should just have stuck to my usual IDE. Oh, you idiot. OK, why am I an idiot? There could be many reasons for that. Thank you. Uh, what we're doing. Well, no punches, Casey. <laughs> yeah, actually, I'm not an idiot. I absolutely meant this because I wanted to show you what can happen if you get it wrong. All right. So this was this was entirely planned. Sure, sure. We talked before about um, importing files. Uh, you can set up your own functions. So when we're talking about functions, as we said, you can set up your own function library and import them. And that means you can go to your own file and say, set up a whole bunch of things. Sorry, the sun's come out, so I'm having to pull the curtain over. So you can go set up a whole bunch of things and uh, then import them in the same way as we can import math or random. So what I've done in my wisdom is I've created a file called pickle that imports pickle. So it's trying to import itself. So what I'm going to do is save it as I tried that, Tony, in uh, PyCharm. Saved it as a different file and it still didn't work for me. But I'm not going to bust your bubble, but go for it. I'm going to be really Imagine annoyed. Versus his own bubble. Oh, well, let's see if it is, right? So I am... Um, renaming it Pickling and let's see what happens this time. Yay! Isn't that literally what I said in the beginning, though? Like you are inside the file called pickle. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose yes. That's yeah. Uh, Jen, if it's not working for you, it's probably because you haven't deleted your original pickle, so it's probably still there. So it's going to the pickle file in the current directory before going to the standard pickle file. All right, so I've renamed it pickling, which means that we can now import pickle, which is the pickle uh, standard pickle function library. The reason it was telling me that pickle didn't include dump is because my pickle didn't include dump, and that's the one it was trying to use first. Um, but now that I've renamed it and it knows it's not that pickle, uh, it's now created pf.pck in my directory. 
And I can do exactly what I've done before with fs.txt with pf.pck and I can type it out and there's our, oh, there's not our data. It's kind of our data. So I can see, for example, Monty's in there. And I can see Python in there and I can see lots of data in there, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff. So what's the other stuff, do you think? I like the smiley. Sorry? There's a smiley after Python SQ. There is a smiley. So what do you think all that other stuff is? Yeah, I mean, you wrote it in binary, right? So. Okay, so that's binary. So it's to be displayed as text. So that's just the textual view of the binary. So what actually is that? Mohammed, that is in binary, but after the pf.pck. It's presumably the binary representation of the 1969 and the five. So what it's done is it's made it a binary file that we can then get back. And that's what the WB does, Mohammed. It puts it into binary mode. Writing to the file in binary mode. That's what all these weird characters are. And the nice thing about that is we can get them back. So I have written the file, but I can now open it up again. So I can go to pickle file. And oops, becomes and I'm going to open it again. I'm going to give it the same name, which was pf. But I am going to change the mode. Instead of write, I'm going to use read. Read. So it's going to look like that. Like, are you going to say R, like RB? So read binary? Read binaries. We need to do both. So we're reading and we're telling it's a binary file and I can see my video getting choppy again. This is great. So we're opening it up again in read mode binary. And what I can do then is off in. So you can see I'm creating a new variable. I'm going to use the pickle data and I'm going to use one of its methods. And you can see there the one that's at the top of the list is load. So I'm going to load the first thing that's in my pickle file. You'll see there I haven't decided what it is. I've just said load it in. Hopefully when you're setting it up, you will have a think about what these data types are and you'll load them in correctly. But just to show you that pickle doesn't, uh, Python doesn't care. I'm just going to keep doing that. So we put in to our file four things, string, a number, a list, and then just uh, a string just on its own without it being attached to a variable. But I am going to load them back in. Oops. I'm going to load them back into four different variables. Okay. And I'm going to print them out. So I'm going to print. It's uh, starting to lag one. real, real good now. Pardon? It's starting to lag a lot now. Is it? Yeah, the free, the, like your screen itself is not updating for me. Nope, oh, it updated. 
all I'm doing is getting it to print the data and I'm also going to get it to give me what it's loaded in. So how what's the um what is it I'm going to use to get to see what kind of data it is? Uh, type. Type. So I'm just going to print out the data and I'm going to get its type. I mean, I guess we can still kind of see what's going on in a sort of slideshow format, but. Uh, hopefully it will catch up to itself. Basically, I'm just adding in the extra lines here. Oh, four. Is it caught up yet? I mean, that depends on where you are right now. Right. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the mess. I'm going to leave this meeting again. Um, you guys stay where you are. I'm just going to leave and come straight back again. Okay. Sure. Wouldn't even let me leave. You're stuck with us now. Imagine being in stuck with a room with me. You would not want that. Don't be so hard on yourself, man. You're a nice guy. I'm I'm only kidding. I'm the best person here. OK, that, that's a bit modest. That. Yeah, that, that hurts a bit, but OK. OK, OK, that was just a bit up my own arse there. But apart from that, that's me. Thanks for the reassurance, Christopher. We can always count on you. I have feelings, you know. <laughs> it does not compute. What is a feeling? All right, dude. <laughs> Mate, when's this meeting gonna end? Well, that depends entirely on if we make it through. I don't. Aye. Was that Hubert? I hear what you're saying, bro. Aye, you fucking hear me? I was, I was talking to you earlier. <laughs> no, you weren't, mate. I haven't Aye, said I a word. No, no, I like the fucking sorry, man. <sighs> I feel like he does need a bit more RAM, but he can't physically get it. Mate, it was like 30 quid. Bro, just download it. Yeah, I was going to say, just download it. Yeah, download it. I mean, no, because it's a Surface Pro, it's soldered. He can't upgrade it. It doesn't open. It doesn't open. Yeah, no, it doesn't open. Because my pal's like, could you try fix my Surface for me? I'm like, I physically can't. They're physically not designed to be fixed. It's like an Apple product. You, you can Wait, fix Apple, Apple products, shit. but Apple's I mean, like actually just really stickly about how they. Like, I mean, have you seen like the new iPhone 12s things? Like, if you uh, replace a camera, it just messes with the whole phone. Yeah, it doesn't help when I have an iPhone 12, which is just brilliant to see. Oh boy. Right, why would you buy an iPhone 12, man? I think it's just such a waste of money. No, I'm on an annual upgrade for my contract, so I get a new phone every year. Oh, uh, 
It's insane. It, it looks like a 5. It literally looks like an iPhone 5 with a better camera. I love the iPhone 5. I have the iPhone 5. Right, that is my daily driver. Like what are you trying to say, Pablo? <laughs> Shit. I had an iPhone 5 eight years ago. That makes me feel old. What can a nutter buys himself a new phone every year? Um, oh, Alright. Contract. Someone that's got a contract right? that allows you to do so. Is the screen okay now? Can you see it? Yep. Uh-huh. Alright, so you can see all I've done is four different loads for the four pieces of data that I know I wrote to the file and then I printed them all out. Is there anything that I'm missing? I may have spoken too soon. I think it's fine now, but... I'm not doing anything yet. Hopefully you can but see But like it. You're, moving your, you're moving your cursor really lags it. I know, I've got, I've got a... I've got the drag thing on so you can see it when it moves. Uh, Enrique's asking people with iPhones can pass intro to programming. Or is it an automatic fail? Oh no, Enrique's right. Definitely an automatic fail. Snack time. Cart. So yeah, I think Enrique is right. Anybody that's got an iPhone absolutely fails. Definitely. Wait. Wait, wasn't wasn't what? Wasn't that an wasn't that an iPhone? No, it's a Samsung. Oh, can't tell the difference these days. Unless, of course, I happen to have a personal phone and a work phone on the table. <laughs> Are they both iPhones? No, my personal one's an Android and the work phone's a, an iPhone. You've made, the, you've made the wrong decision. That's true. Pablo is saying it will depend who's grading, so um, you better hope that you iPhone guys get Pablo. Because if you get him, Ricky, you are stuffed. Oh. All right. Our one hour lecture is already at an hour and three quarters, so I suppose we better actually make some progress. We have the file, and now we're loading back in each of the items. So we know that we had four items, and we're just going to print them out to see what we have. So have we missed anything? Uh, there's two. Never mind. Everything seems fine. What is it we keep missing and you keep correcting me on? I'm closing close. something. Let's close it. Oh, let's close it up. And you'll notice I'm doing this once I've read in the data. I don't have to keep it open once I have the data in my variables. All right, so I've set up some variables. I've written the variables and some text to the file. I've then opened it up again, loaded them into different variables, closed it, and then I'll print them out. So let's see how that goes. And it ran so quickly, I thought I had an error. Monty, so that's data one, is a string. 1869 is an integer, five pythons is a list, and lots of data is a string. Okay, so we have all different data types that have been saved out and have been brought back properly. Anybody get any questions about that before we move on? More pertinently, does anyone have any questions about that it, before my computer dies again? Is there any way that you could concatenate all them together or would you just print them all together? So, How do you mean? I don't like have them all like together. So like Monty 1965, five Python, so lots of data in like one line, would you just? Yeah, well, that's just the print. So you can just yeah. print them out any way you want. 
but mm -hmm. it'd be silly for me to do so because I'm trying to demonstrate that they've been brought back in and they've kept her tight. No, it was just an it was just an idea that was like just wanted clearing up. Cheers. Tony. Yeah. Can you go up to the top of your um, list, please? I can, um, I just want to check. I've got something. I think I've got something wrong. Yeah. I got nothing when I ran. Because mine's is yeah. coming up. Mine's is coming up and saying data type. Oh no, it's fine. Ignore me. Okay. Done. All right. Any questions about that before we move on? Um, uh, okay. Yeah, basically, I have a question. Uh -huh. um, the the import uh, pickle it's uh, a library for for our uh, creation. I mean, or is an actual library? No, it's an actual library. That was a mistake I made. I called it the same name, so I had both an actual library and my code as a new library, and it got very upset. Uh, so okay, uh, right now. We are trying to to create uh, our library. I mean the pickling thing. Well, we're just creating a program. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't say it's as fancy as a library. No, it's just. A, it's just a program. Okay. And so uh, our program pickling is using the library pickle. Okay. And this dot uh, pck. It's a. Uh, it's an actual. Um, it's an actual thing. I mean, like the that txt we can open it with an editor or it's just a random uh, random letters which one are you asking about there sorry the pf.pck okay right okay so that's the file name that we've chosen for our pickled file so i've put down pf just to remind me that it's a pickle file and dot pck is just a standard for any pickle file that we use in uh, Python. Uh, okay. So whenever okay. you say PCK, it's probably a Python pickle file. Okay, so it's an actual. Uh, okay, okay, I understand. Thank you. So it's, it's a well known. So same as if you saw a doc or a TXT, you would know what they were. So if you see a PCK, you'll know that too. Okay. Uh, so Mohammed asked the same question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, Thomas, you've got your hand up. It's it's just not working. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's it's just not working, man. We'll do a one to one in the lab, okay? It's an, it's hard to know where the the issue is because you can see even. But I copy it. exactly what you have, and it doesn't work. I will bet you five pounds and. A piece of apple from my garden that it's not exactly the same. Thomas, have a copy of that, except like, instead of the. No, don't have a copy. We're back to the don't just copy stuff. Type okay, up. Have a look at that for the comparison. Then. Thomas, we'll do a one to one and we'll go through it, okay? Okay. Same as I'd missed out quotes and all sorts of stuff. It just happens. And I checked everything. It's exactly the same. We'll do a one to one. Okay. We'll find it, okay. All right. I'd kind of um, ignored the slideshow. Shush. So, where were we? We had text files, we've written them, we've closed them, we've got some output for them. Uh, we've pickled some things. I should really have read this when I was going along, shouldn't I? Uh, text files are human readable, pickled files aren't human readable, so that's important to remember. Anybody who's got a text file can just open it, you can see it. Um, but a pickled file, as you saw, you can make out some of the things if they happen to be text, but a lot of, lot of it is just random characters representing the binary that was saved. So you need an application. Yeah, we didn't really know what the pickle files are. Sorry? We didn't really know what the pickle files are. <laughs> we were just I think that's why the some of the guys was confused like the P 
PCK extension stuff. Okay, it's just Python's way of storing data. I should really have looked up and see why they chose to call them pickle files. In essence, you pickle stuff in a jar and you can take it back out again. Wow. What you can't do yeah. is just open them and sorry. So so your whole comment about creativity before was unwarranted? <laughs> Most of my comments are unwarranted. <laughs> So when we look at them, they look odd, and we can't really do anything with them. I'm having severe gadget envy because all you people with all your fancy stuff. Ah, uh, yes. You see, I would give you like what, like one or two gigs of my 128 gigs of RAM, but ah, uh, you know, it's just such a hassle. I mean, you need all, you need all that RAM for all the Chrome tabs that you have open. <laughs> Roland, yes, when you pickle food, you store it for later, so it is kind of like these files, quite right. Um, so we can't just look at them, we can't open them in Notepad or Word or Excel or anything like that. We have to open them in uh, a program, but it means that we can keep the same stuff, including the lists. And I want to move on a wee bit, and I know it's been a long one, uh, in fact, it has been a long one. I want to go on and talk a wee bit more about lists. Do you want another wee break before we do that? I'm good to keep going, man. I got uh, my cup of coffee here, I you know. Wanna, I want to just rattle through this. You know, I don't want to rattle through it because there's a lot of stuff in it. I want to make sure people are happy with it, but I'll keep going then. OK, so I want to talk about lists. So what I want to do is look at some of the other things that we can do with lists. So here we have um, a very simple list. Goodness sake. Just with two items in it. In fact, let's let's just do a new one. We'll do a new file. And we'll set up a new what I'm going to do. I'm going to follow along to the um, to the presentation this time. So that it makes sense for you when you come back to it. So I'm going to say if it becomes and I'm going to make a list. Because it's annoying me that it's not putting in the closing brackets and things like that, I'm quickly going to save it. And tell it it's Python. OK, so we've got a list. So I can prove that that's there simply by printing it off. OK, so there's our list and it's working. If you create your own pickle and inside it right import pickle, and then another file to import pickle, will it still work? No, it won't. If nothing else, you can't have multiple files called the same thing. So in the same way as we couldn't set up a variable called print and say print becomes six. We get very confused between the print function and our print variable. So we don't do that.
OK, so we have a list and what we can do is we can start to manipulate manipulate the list. So our fruits. We can have all these sorts of things. Append, extend, sort, insert, remove. We are going to first of all use the insert method. So I'm going to use insert and it says that I need two things. I need an index and an object. You've all gone very quiet. I assume you can still hear me. Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. So what are the indexes? What does index mean? First of all, it's a position inside the list. OK, so what position is banana? A zero. OK, so remember these are zero based. So banana is at zero, apple is at one, and grape is at two. Mohammed, quite right. So what I want to put in is between banana and apple. So what is my index position? M zero. Is it right? But I want to put it in this space here between banana and apple. One, sorry. One. It should be one. Zero would put it at the start. So I'm going to put it in at position one. And it wants a string as well. So I'm going to add in a string. Uh, what have we not had? What was it, orange. And I am just going to. Again. So let's see what happens. We started off banana, apple, grape, and now we've got banana, orange, apple, grape. So we've inserted something into a list. We had a whole pile of methods. Let's look at some of the other ones that came up. So let's look at append. What do you think append is going to do? Change it. Add yeah, to yeah, it. It's going put to change it at it. the end. Put it to the end. At the end. Insert. Right, so it's going to add it at the end. Well, it just needs one thing. It just needs that string because it's always going to be at the end. It doesn't need the index. Add something at the end and print it off again. So Raspberry popped itself in at the end there. What other fun things we have? We have fruits dot. Uh, Well, we have removed, but let's do it a different way. A pop. Let's use a different keyword called. We are going to delete something in fruits. So, how do you think? We should tell it which one we want to delete. Index. OK, so how are we going to designate the index? Square brackets. Square brackets. Square brackets. And let's kill grape. So which index is grape? Move the mouse. Two. So remember at the end here, which index is great? Three. So it started off at two because it was zero, one, two. And then as we added something in, it became zero, one, two, three. So if we want to delete great, it is fruits three. And we can print our fruits again. And it's done exactly what we expected. It's got here, it's deleted three, and it's deleted group.
Everyone happy with that so far? So that delete function, does that delete it from the original set or does that just delete it in this like instance? It deletes it at this point. So it's whatever the set's like just now. It's whatever the list is like just now. Which is why we needed three, because at this point here, it's three, not two. Okay. To begin with, it was at two, and then it became three. Any other questions? Tony, could you repeat uh, what uh, append does? Append it's means add, but add to the end of the list. So uh, add insert, uh, insert adds it to wherever you specify, and append just adds it to the end of the list. Thank you. So I'm going to add in a function to make it clear where things are. Rather than just printing fruits, I'm going to define a function called print fruits. So I'm just going to take a new line. I'm going to then print the whole list. And just so that we know where we are with things, I'm going to print, oops. The first item. So what's the index for the first item? Zero. Zero. I'm going to print the last item. Anyone know what the index of the last item is? You can use a colon sign and four. We have a special number. It's minus one. Just going to say, can I just use minus one? What was that, Jen? I was just going to say minus one to work backwards. Why have I got a red underline in this line here? It's not that a comma. No comma. No comma. Why have I got a red underline in this line here? The line above, you have no brackets or the comma. No the brackets? Comma, the semicolon and the brackets for the function. Not a semicolon. The normal, the normal thingy. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, that. <laughs> So we have that, and I'm just going to modify this, and I'm going to say print fruits instead. So we can see whether that works before we change it in the rest of the program. Yep. Print fruits takes zero positional arguments, but one was given. Any ideas? Put fruits and the function, but as well. So, so where it says def, def function, like that bit. What, up here? Yeah, so in the brackets, put fruits. I could do, but actually, because, that, because this function already knows about fruits, so I declared fruits here, and then I was using the function, and that just uses the fruits 
all it means is I don't have to send it. So I can just have open close bracket. Uh. All right, so there's my output. And that's what, so it's told us what fruits is, it's told us what a first item is, and it's told us what a last item is. So I'm just going to modify the code up here. I'm going to take that and I am going to replace every one of these with the function that we have. And just so it doesn't run off the screen, I am going to set my breakpoints so that it stops at each one of these so we know what we're doing. I shall make this a wee bit bigger so you can see the whole thing and I'm going to run it. OK, so we start off. Start it off with fruits, banana, apple, grape. The first one's banana, the last one's grape. Up here, we'll set a breakpoint before it inserts. So we're going to insert at position one, orange. What is the first item going to be after we insert orange? Still banana. Still going to be banana. What about the last one? Still grape. Still the same. Okay, the first last aren't going to change. Could you scroll up a little bit, please? Uh, which one? One to ten. The lines. This bit here. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, it's on the slides if you want that code. That's why I've kept to the to the slides this time, so that um, you have the copy there, so you can get it on earlier. OK, so I've done the insert. insert. Now we're going to have an append. What's going to happen here? What's the first item going to be once we append Raspberry? Still banana. And what's our last item? Raspberry. Raspberry. Okay, let's see. So the first item is still banana, but the last item, because we appended it, because we added it onto the end, the last item is now raspberry. Finally, we have a Dell. So Dell fruits three, what's going to be removed? Apple. Sorry? Grape. Grape. So looking at a uh, list, position zero is banana, position one is orange, position two is apple, and position three is grape, position four is raspberry. So position three is grape, Dell fruits three should remove grape. And indeed it has. There's the whole code, Thomas. Anybody get any questions about that before we move on? Nope, all happy. Yeah, I'm all oh, sorry, with Tony. That. Tony. Yeah. Why did you remove, why did you change the print statements to um, the print underscore fruits? Because I wanted to show you what the first and last items are so that we could see it as we were changing it through. And if I have so many print statements, I didn't want to copy and paste the five print statements after each one of these because it makes the code longer. Any time when we're repeating things, it's better to put it into a function and then just call the function. OK, so that way it will still print the um, the program as uh, as it is, but the, the function would be the same. Yeah, it also means that if we want to add something in. So if we want to say. The list fruits is now I've changed the function there but what will happen of course is when we run that 
that changes it in every part. So every time we run the function we get, instead of fruits is, we get the list fruits is. Ah. We get that every time. Okay. So anything that we put into the function, we can eyes every time. So if I just want to visually show the end and the start. I can change the function and by running it, it changes it every time through. I want a wee space there. I'm going to change the function. I'm going to add in an extra print. All right. Oh, yes. so whenever we've got repeated code, we want to put it into a function so that we don't have to copy the code and so that if we change what's going to happen, we only have to change it in one place. Uh, Makes sense? Certainly. OK. Any other questions? Just now before we move on. Just how do you survive without coffee, but. Because coffee is horrible. OK, so I will debate you on that. Inserting, appending, deleting. Oh, yes. One of the nice things about lists is they are searchable. You can find things in lists. So I can see. Uh, and I've forgotten what we had. Those are in the list at position. And then I can say, go to our fruits list and give me the index. And instead of putting the index number, I can ask it what we want to find. In this case, it is Apple. So if I run that, apples are in the list at position two, zero, one, two. So we can actually, in a list, we can use that to search for things. So we're starting to not just store data, we can now find it. Could you put that code Our, back up a second, please? Pardon? Could you put that code back up a second, please? Thank you. So if, for example, in our Pac-Man, we had a list where we had people and their high scores, we could search for the person's name and say the most you've ever got is and print off their high score. And if we look for something that's not there, now, does the plural of mango have an S or an ES? I think it's ES. It's ES. Yes. Thank you. If we look for mangoes in our list, we get an error. It tells us mango isn't in the list. Okay, so we're going to have to do something about that to see um, to get an answer back and not have it create an error.
OK, so we can find things, we can create the lists, we can pickle them. And as I say, we can create lists where we have. Multiple data. <laughs> we can have a two dimensional list. Somebody remind me how you put a comment into Python? Uh, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. Or control forward slash. We are going to have a list of people and their scores. So what we can have is high scores. A list. And the list is going to contain other lists. We can have Fred. His high score is eight. We can have Barney. We got eleven. Wait, how would you reference a list within a list? Do you do you have like? Never mind. Actually, I, I think you'll get to that. Clearly, the smartest person on there is with a score of 88. Unless score is directly proportional to mistakes. So proportional to the... To errors. So like your score is higher than what errors you make. Uh, whatever, yeah. OK, so we can print that just to see how it looks. So it just looks just like a list of lists when we print it out. I saw something similar for the employee of the month. <laughs> we can do what we did before, so we can say High scores, uh, insert. In fact, let's insert it. We will end it. And Sumana, you're still unmuted. Oh, sorry, guys. I I I am multitasking. By the way, it's okay. The Wayne's making more sense than I am. Okay, so we're going to append. Another list, and we're going to say uh, Bam Bam got two. And we can run that again. OK, so as a new player comes in, we can add another. Uh, another player with their score. I'm not going to do it, but we could pickle that. We could save it. Um, all of the insert and, imp and appends work in the same way. If we instead wanted to insert that. It would be the same thing. So how did we insert? What was it we had to do? You need an index position. So we put it in two for no reason, no particular reason. So there, instead of it being at the end, it's in position two. How would we put that into a list inside of the list? Say that so again, like, sorry? How will we append it so Bam Bam would, for example, appear in the same list as Wilma, for example? 
Right, OK, I'll get them. Uh, I don't know if I want to get there today. No, I don't think I want to get there today. Um, Please, I need to know. <laughs> I'm really conscious that the one hour lecture is now. Two hours and 20 minutes. I'm also really conscious I've added in a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of new stuff today. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to tell you in this bit, Nicholas, but we'll get together in the lab and we'll take you through that. Um, what I do want you to do is take a break for 10 minutes and then come back to a very shortened lab. Here's your exercise for a lecture. So we'll just create a list, save it to a file, retrieve it. I know some of you have done that as you have gone along. And the other thing I want you to do is today's lab. Which is going to be a simple shopping yeah, cart. Shopping list. Oh, come simple, on, I can't use said. drag anymore. Sorry? You said simple. OK, so I want you to do a shopping list. That allows users. So I want you to create a menu. Um, and I want you to. Um, allow users to add things. So menu add and ask them what it is they want to add or delete or view. OK, so a very simple menu system. Once you've got that done, I want you to extend it out so that it's not just the item, but it's how many of each item. So I want don't just want bananas, I want four bananas. Wait, 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 actually, I think we did that. You know, for the grading system of the first thing uh, where like you had grades and then you gave uh, and then you gave score. I mean, you have scores and you gave grades. Um, I think it was lab th uh, lab three that asked you to create a program that counts how many uh, how many attempts there were. No, wait, that was yeah, that was lab three. Uh, they counted how many attempts there were, but that wasn't for the. Um, never mind, I got things mixed up. But yeah, there was a counting system that we created for that. It's almost like these things build up in each other, and you can use the knowledge that you gained earlier in the later ones. Don't it's just we didn't really cover the data types before functions and stuff, such as lists and stuff. Say that again, sorry. I said we didn't really cover like lists, tuples, and dictionaries before the functions and loops and if statements. Like no, we covered basic functions. We did say that there were lists, which is why I've added in more today. And we'll and for those of you that have no idea what we're talking about, don't worry about it. Because all I was going to say was we're going to cover tuples and dictionaries later. We will come to them. We're just not there yet. Uh, don't forget your shopping list must be persistent. By which I mean. When you're doing this, it needs to be saved to a file. So before you exit your program, make sure you save it out. And when you load it back in again, load in your uh, shopping list. You're going to have a, lot, a whole lot of shopping lists if you check these. Questions? Are these the only two questions or are there more? No, that's it. There's the one in the. There's the one on the slides. Which is just uh, say most of you have followed along with me anyway, so you've done a lot of that. And then we're actually making it a shopping list and a shopping list with a quantity that has been saved and can be recalled. You sound disappointed as if you want more. <laughs> Sounds can be deceiving. Any other questions? OK, in that case, what I'm going to do is going to Stop the recording.